Hello and welcome to Tiny Table Talk for The Challenge, Season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies, Episode 6. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you some theories, some questions, some food-based challenge history facts, along with going over some comments from my Thursday's review and recap. But before we get into any of that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Do you have muscles? If you do, you probably had a muscle or two sore. I know I have. I normally get it from working out one or sitting at my computer for far too long. That's when I like to reach to the Charles Warren All Natural Sweet Ginger Vapor Rub. It is made with six all natural oils and butters. And did I mention that the packaging is biodegradable? Another product I love to use is the Coconut Milk and Oats Body and Foot Powder. It's talc free, baking soda free, and cornstarch free, all while keeping my feet sweat free, and it smells like fresh coconut cake. And right now, if you go to charleswarrenpresents.com and use my promo code at checkout, you can get a discount. All the information and a link is down in the description below. Thank you so much to Charles Warren Presents for sponsoring this video. And now on to Tiny Table Talk. In all my years of watching the challenge, one thing just makes me so angry and that is watching a cliffhanger to an episode. Why? Why all of a sudden did we go from the first five episodes of the season being 90 minutes to this episode being only 60 minutes and being cut off right in the middle of a fight? We didn't even get to the elimination. We didn't even get to a deliberation. Now looking at tvguide.com, I was scratching my head because not only is this past week's episode only an hour, but also next week's episode. What is going on now that would warrant a 60 minute episode instead of 90 minutes that we've been getting for not only majority of this season, but the past few seasons. I have a few theories on that. When taking a look at what happened this past week's episode and the previews to next week's episode, we can say without a doubt that Fessy will be disqualified from the season. He put his hands on Josh's face, pushed him away, and that is putting hands on another player, going back to Dirty 30, when Nelson did exactly the same thing and was disqualified from that season. Jumped seven seasons into the future, nothing has changed to make this okay. So Fessy will be eliminated, and so my first theory is that a lot of people are being disqualified or pulled from the game outside of eliminations. Maybe this is throwing off the timing of the season, and so now MTV is having to pivot. They want to slow things down, pace it out a little bit better. My second theory, and what I think is actually happening behind the scenes, is that Survivor is starting its 41st season next Wednesday at 8 p.m., the exact same time slot. We haven't had a Survivor season in forever. The cast just dropped. A lot of people are excited for this new Survivor season, and it's going to be direct competition to MTV The Challenge, whose ratings are very much wobbly slash historically low at this moment. Now I'm gonna be talking about those ratings very soon in an upcoming video, so we're not gonna get too much into that, but I wholeheartedly feel this is the challenge playing defensively. They're putting the ball in now our court, the audience's court. They're asking us, choose, what are you gonna watch? Are you gonna watch a brand new show, a brand new season with a brand new cast? Or are you going to sit down and watch the aftershock of this fight, see how the rest of the night plays out? Also, TJ is gonna make a house call. Also, there is a hall brawl this episode. What are you gonna watch? Are you gonna watch an hour of the challenge or are you gonna go watch Survivor's premiere episode? I wanna know what's gonna happen next. I want the elimination. I want to see what's gonna happen when TJ makes a house call. Now they're saying, well, now you have to choose. Are you gonna watch it in real time to watch everything unfold in front of your eyes or are you gonna have to watch it later because you want to go watch a completely new show completely new season it could be a combination of them both but i think that's why we're getting the cliffhanger randomly thrown in here on episode six and episode seven of the season now we've seen hour-long episodes in the past few seasons in War of the Worlds 2, Total Madness, and also in last season, Double Agents. But last season, it happened way later on in the season when Nam was leaving and they were really having to pace out the show because so many people left in the show and they were having to slow it down because they had a set number of episodes. But this time, it's happening so early on in the season that I do think that it plays into a fact that maybe it is them trying to slow down the pace of the season, but I also do think it plays in a role that 
survivors starting up very soon. But that's my theory on why we had such a big cliffhanger and getting two episodes that are only an hour instead of the regular 90 minutes. But what is your theory? If you have a theory, let me know down in the comment section below. I have a genuine question of why is everyone on the Amber hate train? this season in the house. Now, it started out with like, okay, maybe Fessy and Casey are the only ones that dislike Amber. Maybe they're petty. Maybe they're jealous of what happened last season. She's the first Big Brother winner. They saw her as a layup, and then she went on to win while they got fourth place. But this episode, it seems that the whole house doesn't like Amber. We saw Esther and Berna call her fake and annoying. We have Amanda siding with Fessy and Esther, which of course she would. But also we have Big T, who was friends with Amber last season, now doing the whole like fake yawning and going like, oh, is Amber talking about being blindsided again? Ugh. It seems as though that Amber doesn't have a single friend in the house except for Josh and Jeremiah. It's baffling to me because we're watching this unfold and hearing everybody talk, yet nobody's giving a solid reason on why they don't like Amber. And in the edits, we haven't seen anything to warrant this hate towards Amber. Like Amber hasn't gone into the confessionals and been like, I think I'm better than all these people and just talked mad smack about anybody like during one-on-one -on -one conversations or during the confessionals. She seems relatively nice, but you would think something would spill out if her true colors were coming out on the show that maybe the editors would leak it out for us as the audience to understand where everyone else is coming from in the house, yet nothing is surfacing. I don't understand it. And I feel like Magatu, Will Ferrell's character from Zoolander, where I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because I don't understand where all this Amber hate is coming from. Let me know down in the comment section below if you've heard cast members talk about Amber and why they don't like her, or if you heard any stories or have a theory on why all this Amber hate is coming from because I legit don't understand it and I'm confused and I also wanna know, am I the only one that doesn't understand it? I really don't. Are you with me and not totally understanding it or am I just alone here because I legit don't understand it? Please let me know down in the comment section below. Now, in this past week's episode, we got a little taste of what could be considered Pizzagate 3.0, where Amber is wondering who took her pizza. This leads to a conversation with Fessy, and then all hell breaks loose. So when watching this episode, that got me thinking, and along with a tweet from David, to talk about some of the most iconic food fights that have ever happened on the channel. Now, when I say food fights, I don't mean like picking up food and throwing it at people. I'm talking about arguments or house drama or fights that have stemmed from food-based topics or something that happened of or relating to food. Let's start this off talking about all three pizza gates. The first one happened in Vendetta's when Marie took a box of pizza to her room and then came back out and took some slices from a different pizza box. Brad saw this, became the pizza police. Really, Marie, hey, you took a whole box to your it room. It was a different Why slice! All right, get gangsta about it, I don't care. Then later on in the night when Brad and Brittany were doing the hanky-panky, that's when Marie took a box of pizza, threw it on them. Here's a piece of me. <laughs> and Brad lost it. Angry lost it, not like, you get what I mean, get your head out of the gutters. Pizza gate number two happened more recently. It happened in Double Agents where everybody came back from a night at the club or the igloo as they called it and Casey was making a pizza. CT was getting frustrated because he wanted to make an egg quesadilla. There was a little bit of words exchanged. CT leaves. Josh follows him. He's literally crying in the kitchen because Aww, she had a phone with him. We talk to him. But Josh, that has nothing to do with you. Go away. CT goes in there, finds out Casey isn't crying at all and this leads to CT and Josh having a big blow up in the kitchen. You're not saying anything, you're just talking. Why are you screaming over me? Because you're so I stupid. I can scream louder than you. Oh, I can oh, scream louder. Oh. You are Let's move into Potato Gate that happened in season 19, Fresh Me 2, where Pete spent a lot of times working on these potatoes. He was finally able to sit down and enjoy his potatoes, all to have a drunk Danny reach in, grab it with his bare hands. And who do you know comes over and grabs a handful of them? Danny. 
This leads to the whole house, including Danny's partner, Sandy, just to rain hate on Danny. The house is able to finally calm down at a certain point, but all of this just exploded because of potatoes. Rivals 2, season 24, we saw Ketchup Gate happen. I'm just gonna put gate after everything I say. But Ketchup Gate happens when Ryan Knight decides to exploit Jemmy's worst nightmare, and that is ketchup, and he's just squirting it all over her. She is freaking out. <laughs> Knight was having a grand old time, but it was legit torture for Jemmy. And the last food fight I want to talk about is none other than Pasta Gate that happened in Final Reckoning. On a bus ride back to the challenge house, that's when Corey's pasta was thrown out the window by a drunk Tony. Corey, being disrespected, was so frustrated that he got off the bus fuming and Tony decided to instigate Corey in this moment. Corey decided to sweep the leg and drop Tony to the ground and the house exploded. Devin and Bananas were going at it for all hours of the night. Devin, how about I slip and take you out too, mother Do it. No, you. The next morning, TJ made a house call and Corey and Devin were disqualified from the season. And to me, Pastagate is the number one infamous iconic food fight in challenge history. But I turn it over to you. What is the most iconic food fight in challenge history that comes to your mind? Is it one on my list that I mentioned or is it another one that I didn't mention? Let me know that in the comment section below. But speaking of comments, now let's read some comments from my Thursday's review and recap. And the first comment comes from Julia who says, this episode seems so short. I hate when we don't get to see an elimination every episode. I'm right there with you. Also, I understand why Amber is upset with the Fessy issue. However, I think Esther believes that Amber is lying. She thought Josh told Amber since they were partners, but on the after show, Josh said he never told Amber because he was trying to change Fessy's mind. I assume Fessy and Josh are both going home next week. Now, I think that's very interesting because I don't know if necessarily Josh or even Esther are going to go home i think that could now when going back to say like the duel two when ct and adam got into a fight ct got the better of adam but both were sent home because they were participating in that fight the same happened the next season in the ruins when brad was instigating Darrell and Darrell pummeled him and they were both sent home um i don't know though i feel like 100 percent Fessy is going to go home, but I think there is a possibility that maybe Josh could be sent home, but I don't know if there is enough there to warrant sending more people home than just Fessy. Next comment comes from Carissa who says, Casey's first shot confessional could have been filmed earlier in the season, pre-Messy Fessy. There is no pre-Messy Fessy, but most likely it wasn't and just shows that Amber is totally alone in the game. Yeah, I just think that they didn't care. They don't care that Amber is coming off winning last season, that she was a part of the challenge before this season. They just wanted to take a shot at her and nobody on the vet side really cares for Amber. And it's really sad to see. D Money Raw says, I'm so glad Tori cleared up what happened on the challenge podcast. She said that one of the cameramen told her to say that it was Fessy to stir up drama and put on a show. I'm a Tori fan and I didn't like that she lied, but if they tell you to for the content, then I guess you gotta do it. I rarely slash don't ever listen to the challenge official podcast, uh, but it's interesting that she brought it up and she said that the cameraman told her to do it. It took you a cameraman to really wanna stir the pot. I mean, it just shows that the cameraman and production crew is like, we need to get something going here. There's not enough drama, there's not enough going on and we gotta really stir this thing up and they're stepping in rather than even the contestants wanting to step in. I think that's the sad part is that the contestants aren't sitting there going like, let's put on a show. Let's get something entertaining here. Instead, it's everybody who's on the outside trying to push something to happen. And I don't know, that's pretty sad. Savannah comments, I do not understand all these rookie girls plus Big T calling Amber fake. I know last season with the rookie girls, Amber B and Amber M had a falling out, but they have been given no reason this season to keep saying that. I'm annoyed with them already. I'm glad I'm not the only one not understanding the Amber hate, why there's so much being pushed onto Amber from the rookies and all the women and pretty much all the men are not sticking up for Amber at this point, but 
Yeah, I totally understand it, Savannah. James Duncan comments, trashy move throwing a drink on someone. The argument wasn't even that serious to begin with. Thank you, James. Yes, I don't understand it. Like, I get that Esther is like trying to back up her partner, but her screaming super loud to get everybody's attention was a little bit over the top and then throwing the drink into Amber's face when Amber wasn't even talking to her. It just was weird how Esther was just inserting herself into the argument and the chaos. The next comment comes from Lemontree9280 who says, so I know there's a lot of new fun rookies and Josh and Fessy dominate airtime, but where the hell have Corey and Ashley been? Just boring old vets? I miss Corey drama. Yeah, it seemed as though that Josh and Fessy and Big Brother have been dominating the airtime and specifically this episode, granted it's only 60 minutes so they have to divvy up airtime that they deem fit. Corey has been lost in the background for a long time. Ever since he got like connected with Bettina, he's just been gone. He's just been in the shadows and Ashley is the same way. She, We got a little bit of her and Nelson like fighting back and forth because of the whole friends with benefits thing. But now that Nelson and Berna are securely a couple and Huey is moved on from being partnered up with Ashley, it seems like Ashley is also just kind of like waiting in the background, coasting. A good segue is Nick's comment about Corey spent all his early years hating on bananas, and then this episode, he ended up taking a play right out of the bananas playbook by creating chaos in the house through instigating the big argument. Kind of a full circle moment in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, Corey was like on the next level of instigating. I mean, he was there the whole time. He's yelling for somebody to get Josh. Once they were actually in the same room, that's when Corey was in Fessy's ear, jumping up and down, really like calling him fake. If you're a snake, stand up. And maybe with possibly Fessy getting DQ'd, this is his revenge for what he did on Nelson. I think more so Corey was just having fun with it, but yeah, he was definitely instigating like to the next level. Vinny comes in with a comment saying, they consistently change the format of an episode for whatever reason, and it is the most aggravating thing ever. That being said, unless they are specifically not showing Josh's retaliation, I cannot see any reason for him to be removed from the game. I have to agree, like I mentioned when I was commenting on Julia's comment, that I don't know if there's enough to warrant somebody else to be let go from the season besides Fessy in this moment, but you never know with the challenge, it could get to where they don't want more, any more instigation. Maybe they'll say because Josh was involved so heavily and directly, that he should be let go as well. That could blow up Casey's game because that's pretty much both people that she's working with besides Nani in this game. So we're gonna have to see what's gonna happen. That could get spicy if both Fessy and Josh are going to be let go in this game. A Haven for the Law says, I really like how Amber has reacted to all of the hate especially on the after show, Amber acted with grace and class. I agree. I mean, even after getting the drink thrown into her face, she like turned to Josh and was still asking the question, just wiping her face. She didn't go after Esther. She didn't like attack her or come at her. She just was talking in the confessional saying like, I feel so disrespected. I've never felt this disrespected. I have to give it up for her. She's doing a great job with all this hate because I don't know what I would do if I had like 20 people in a house just throwing out this negative energy towards me 24 seven. Marcus comes in with a comment saying, with all the hookups this season, if we ever get Nexus 3, that cast is going to be fire. I think an Nexus 3 or even a Rivals 4 would be fantastic after this season because we have seen a lot of pop-offs in this season and I think that could lead to a fantastic rival season. And the final comment comes from Camille who says, I hated the daily challenge. I hated the cliffhanger. I hated the hate train, but I'll be back for more next week. I'm right there with you, Camille. But that is it for this week's Tiny Table Talk. what do you think about this episode? Let me know that in the comment section below. What do you think is going to happen next episode with Fessy? Do you think that Josh is also going to be let go? Do you think Esther could be let go? Let me know that all in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. While you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge 37 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.